All right, so now that we've covered the left side of this uh, middle portion, let's go over to the right and take a look at some of the parameters that we can edit here. Now you'll notice that uh, this is essentially a mirror image of this left side. And what we have here is an edit column with uh, level, feedback, filter, fine pitch adjustment, LFO or low frequency oscillator, and pan. And you'll notice that as I click through these, each of them kind of has its own settings in this middle display. Now level's the most obvious example to start with. And here we have all of the resonators set to their maximum level. Now if I click and drag in this field, I can start to edit the levels of the individual resonators, right? Just by dragging over them, altering the individual settings. I can turn all off but one, for example. Raise and lower the level on that one. And go back to our default. Now off to the right there's this master slider that kind of determines the master effect for, or the master level for that effect. In this case, it's master level. Below we have feedback, and feedback is uh, pretty important in terms of how the resonators end up sounding. As you'll recall, we, we said that a comb filter takes a very short delay of the signal and feeds it back into the signal, and thus creates these, these resonance effects. And the amount of uh, signal that's fed back in is uh, important in terms of how this, the, the resonator ends up sounding. So if we take, uh, for example, the, the feedback setting, which is all set to maximum now, and we start to edit these, you hear the quality of the, the sound really changes. And with feedback, there seems to be kind of a range with this slider that you're working within, right? As you get almost to the furthest left, it starts to have demonstrate other feedback effects that you didn't get it right. So that's an interesting one. Now I'm going to reset my snapshot so we can go forward. Oops. And uh, move down to filter, which also is a uh, is related to the comb filter. Now the comb filter filters the feedback. And this, the setting that it's on now is a notch filter. And a notch filter is uh, sometimes called a band reject filter. It kicks out part of the frequency of the signal. But we also have a low pass, which, as the name describes, allows low frequencies to pass based on what the filter cutoff, where the filter cutoff is set. So if I take, uh, say, one resonator, and I'm just going to let, let us hear one resonator and hear the effect of the filter on one resonator. I click on filter, and I have this set to low pass. If I start to drag this down, I'm essentially closing the filter, right? I'm lowering that filter cutoff, so it's really at the bottom only the lowest of the low frequencies that are getting through. Now, as I raise this, and that applies, of course, to all the resonators, and I have all these set up. Click on filter. So that, that's the filter setting. Now fine pitch adjustment is a little easier to understand. That's of course uh, a fine fine pitch. And it, it's generally set to nothing. But if you want to adjust the pitch, you can you hear that kind of slight detuning effect as I do that. And then of course the amount of fine pitch adjustment will also depend on this master slider here. So I drag it to the right, it really gets it really starts sounding uh, out of tune. Reset my snapshot here. Now let's move down to LFO. LFO is uh, a low frequency oscillator effect and the LFO itself is down here. Now these are all set to maximum but you'll notice that the LFO master is not set very high. So if I, if I begin to raise this hear that I mean, once I get over to the right it really starts having a very deep effect on the sound and I can raise and lower the rate down here Whoa. so that's a lot of fun to play with and of course uh, you can turn this d up or down 
for each individual resonator, so it's very useful. Or you can apply it to only a single resonator if you want. You could say. So that's an interesting effect. And then of course at bottom we have something that's probably more familiar to you uh, than some of these others up here, which is pan. And this just places each resonator in the stereo spectrum. So once again, let's take just a single resonator and get a sense for how this works. Now pan, for this one, is basically in the middle, but if I raise this, you'll hear that it pans to the left. And if I lower it all the way to the bottom, you hear it pans all the way to the right. So it's pretty straightforward, but this is kind of useful for creating stereo spread for the chord sounds. You'll find that um, some of the snapshots use this and it creates kind of a nice space in the signal. Now there are a few more buttons at the bottom of the right side of this uh, middle portion of the interface and they allow us to initialize either a selected parameter. So in fa if I have pan selected, I can click in it SEL and that will just initialize that parameter. Right? We'll set it to zero essentially the alt function will initialize everything, right? So if I initialize that, all of the settings that we have created will then go back to zero for all of these parameters. Now single allows you to edit a single column uh, without dragging into the others. So if you're, if you're you know, getting really uh, kind of fine, fine adjustments here and you don't want your mouse cursor straying off into another column and accidentally adjusting that column, you can click on sing, uh, single. This this knob over here is purely cosmetic. What it does is it changes the width of these columns. It's just a visual thing for however you prefer to work. So there, we've covered that middle section. Now we're gonna go on and, and cover the rest and bring it all together and then start looking at some applications.